Listen, I know we're broken up, but it's it's Claire's birthday tonight, and I thought that um, uh, I thought that maybe um, you'd like to come to her birthday party. Um, anyway, give me a call, and um, hope you're okay. Bye. Can't go out with the dog. This is Fleabag the BBC Three and Amazon comedy series by Phoebe Waller-Bridge. She's the heart and soul of the show, creating, writing, and starring in it. There are literally no scenes without her character, and that's because the story isn't just about her, it is her. She's invited us in, quite literally, frequently breaking the fourth wall for asides, commentary, and to finish other character sentences. Please don't contact me, or turn off my house drunk in your underwear, it won't work this time. It will. Today, I want to look at how Fleabag uses that perspective, with minimal spoilers. The idea is to talk about it for both people who have and haven't seen the show. It does contain some suggestive material, so heads up. I'm not obsessed with sex. I just can't stop thinking about it. I'm Jackson, and this is Ideas at Play. The world of Fleabag doesn't just revolve around Waller-Bridge's character, also named Fleabag. It is her world. It's rich with her voice. Even in awkward silences, she speaks to us directly with her eyes. Immediately, this perspective forms our experience. We only ever see characters from Fleabag's subjective point of view. To be fair, she's not an evil stepmother. She's just a cunt. Whether it's intentional or unintentional, she projects all her baggage onto us. And we have to take it as fact. We don't know the truth about anything until Fleabag is confronted with it and forced to show us. Oh, God. Yeah, you check me out, Chub Chub, because it's never going to happen. Oh, God, he can't believe how attractive I am. Kind of worried I'm gonna make a sex offender out of the poor guy. Here we go. This better be good. Here we go. <coughs> Walk of shame. There are few shows that follow a single character so devotedly. Often, shows with a single character will rely on a wider cast to share the load, or reveal things to us as they're revealed to the main character. But having Fleabag as a guide highlights the fact that she's had a life beyond this story for some time now. It's an established place. The show is just a small portion of that world and she's introducing us to it, making the audience as much a character in the story as anyone else. I admire how much Harry commits to our breakups. <laughs> I've considered timing a breakup for when the flat needs a bit of a going over. I don't think this is working. Now, breaking the fourth wall is hardly a brand new tool to TV or film. It's been used countless times, and usually to deliver background information and a character's perspective all in the package of a joke. But by having Fleabag invite us into her world, we shift the focus from what the narrator tells us to the narrator herself. When she tells us something, we don't fixate on what she said, but instead wonder why she said it. Nah, he's a con. You can't call someone who is grieving a con. Oh, is shit grieving. Him. No one grieves like that unless they're in a Who are you to pass judgment on Italy? Italy? Trust me, he's in a different grave every day. He can't get enough of it. After all, we don't know everything about Fleabag, and how could we? We've only just met her. Most narrators aren't questioned like this, and the longer we stay with her, the more we learn. She reveals angles to her personality that we hadn't expected, and it's not always funny. When we see the edges of what she keeps guarded, our presence on her shoulder takes on a different tone. And what makes the show special is how it uses perspective to structure the entire story. Fleabag is a short series. With six 25-minute episodes, the total runtime for the series is roughly a two and a half hour movie. In theory, you could totally watch it that way. But one thing I've come to like about TV more than film is the way it chunks its stories. For those of you who don't know, a TV serial is a series that has a continuing plot episode to episode. A season or series may have a narrative arc that looks like this. But inside that complete story, each episode has its own beginning, middle, and end. The best shows add to this by balancing parallel character arcs and even going so far as to have scenes with their own arcs. In the same way that in biology, an animal belongs to a species, genus, family, etc. Looking back at Fleabag as a whole series, it's clear that there is a serial story, with a single beginning, middle, and end. But that being said, you could easily watch any episode on its own and still understand the emotions in a way that you can't when you watch scenes of a movie or episodes of something like Game of Thrones out of context. Obviously, the complete emotional journey is more powerful watched in order, but there is a weight in each chapter. What's special about Fleabag isn't the underlying story, it's how the pieces come together to build that narrative. 
Television shows use their unique voice to set in you expectations of who a character is or what a story might be about. The next man who walks in here is getting ridden to death. Dad! Hi! Not ideal. But Fleabag takes each episode to change those rules of engagement. As we learn more about her, she breaks the mold of our expectations, becoming more an individual at every turn. Each episode veers off in a slightly new direction so that when Fleabag looks into the camera, she's not just breaking the fourth wall, she's breaking into a new dimension of the structure of the show. Just as we don't fully know Fleabag yet, we learn new things about the story as it repeatedly seems to tell us, this isn't the show you think it is. And that's something unique that TV can bring to the table. Where film tells a single focused narrative, TV has always branched out in order to fill its episodic format. Where film culminates, TV asks, but then what? And it's this distinction that Fleabag uses to add depth to its story. When a show can be renewed or canceled after any season, plot has to be flexible. And that uncertainty has made it a medium that's mostly about characters. Episodes become days in the life or chapters in a larger adventure. And Fleabag isn't changing that, it's building on it by using perspective. There's a breadth to her life beyond the scope of each episode, and beyond the series itself. It may feel complete in the end, but there could just as easily be more to tell. Fleabag's life didn't start there, and it doesn't end when the credits roll. Slots! Yes? As you may have heard, we're living in the era of peak TV right now. Or post-peak TV. It's unclear. With more shows on the air than ever before, it's an opportunity for more ideas and stories to be explored. Basic genres are being rewritten. There are half-hour sitcoms that purposefully aren't that funny, and hour-long dramas mainly designed for laughs. Some shows are embracing a high level of serialization, while others are creating standalone episodes. And that's a really exciting place for television to be in. But I think it's just as interesting to look at how the medium itself can change and morph to be even more effective and nuanced. It's really like genuinely experimental, I think, now, in a way that theatre has been forever. Right. And, and uh, that you can just do whatever you want. You can follow your nose in a way that you haven't really been able to do with TV before. It's been quite controlled. Instead of just asking, what can TV be about? Shows are starting to ask, what even is TV? And pushing the limits even further. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. This is actually a re-upload of a video of one of my first videos that got taken down because I used a clip that was too long, but now it should be good. I have another video on Phoebe Waller-Bridge's new show, Killing Eve, coming out soon, so stick around for that if you're interested, or, you know, watch it so you can be ready. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon who make this channel possible. If you like my channel, head over there and throw in a buck to help make it the best channel it can be. And if you're looking for more stuff, I've been recapping each episode of The Handmaid's Tale this season over on my blog, so take a gander at that. Until next time, thanks again.